uh, I thought it'd be cool to kind of change things up for all of you and for me uh, to do a webinar with uh, a partner. So we decided to do a monthly webinar series called uh, Inspiration and Stylization. And the point of it is to uh, give you a little backstory to the images, uh, any relevance around them, uh, why we took them, and then also go into the processing. So um, in hopes of, of getting all of you thinking uh, about different ways to enhance your own style. And we're gonna, like I said, we've tr covered travel photography, some of our favorite travel images last month. That webinar is on our university. Uh, this month is landscape, and we're going to cover other ones. Like uh, we, we were talking about doing people next month, right? And we'll mm -hmm. probably do things like uh, vehicles or travel or um, transportation. Uh, there's no limit. Um, so I'm going to start with one image first, and then the way it's going to work is I'm going to transfer control over to Ryan, and he'll work on an image, uh, and you'll get the idea. Um, so let's uh, let's start. I'll go to Lightroom, and my first. Uh, image is actually going to be uh, an HDR image, or it'll be a tone mapped image. And <clears throat> what uh, what I wanted to do here was let's just take one of the mid-range images so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So uh, I took this image in uh, northern Washington state last year. Um, it's a place called Tulip Town uh, near Mount Vernon, uh, Washington. And it was a uh, I never, you know, it's one of those things where when you first shoot in an area like this, you, you'll never forget it. It was just pretty crazy just how many tulips there were. Um, also, it was uh, the first time really uh, visiting, my time visiting the Northwest. So uh, it, for some reason, when it, this particular trip yielded a lot of really important images for me uh, because uh, it, it turns out that uh, a year later, I would end up moving to the Pacific Northwest. So... When I, uh, when I got here, uh, immediately I was overwhelmed. I was actually really overwhelmed because, one, I, did, I never really did much floral photography, um, and two, uh, you know, I, I just kind of didn't know where to start. There were people pretty much everywhere. Um, so I went ahead and I just started getting shots. Uh, I'm a strong advocate of uh, getting what I call the gimme shots. And uh, the gimme shots are, um, are basically the shots that you'll take right off the bat, you know, uh, there's not much to them, but you're taking, the point is not so much getting these amazing shots, it's more getting your mind and your eye, uh, stretching it out, uh, like when you exercise, you stretch out first. The same thing with photography, um, with your creativity, is that when you're out shooting, just get the shots, they don't have to be anything compelling or anything special, but um, by just by doing that, putting the camera to your face and looking through the viewfinder, uh, you start thinking. Uh, you get a shot, you look at it, maybe you chimp on the back of your LCD, and then you start thinking of new ways. So, towards the end, we were my, I was with my friend Jacob. We were getting ready to leave. We were, en ending, we were uh, planning on going to, uh, uh, what is it called, Deception Path, um, which is a huge bridge. It's a beautiful bridge in Washington. Um, as we were leaving, I, I kind of had the idea of putting my fisheye lens on. So this image here was taken with my 5D Mark II and my Canon 15 millimeter fisheye lens. So I put the camera on uh, a tripod and I put it really low and I tilted it so that you can see the horizon here um, <coughs> starts to bend. ZJ says that he calls that process the warm-up act. And he's 100% right. Um, absolutely, because um, we need to kind of get, it's very, very rare, I think, that you, from a cold start, you're going to get a great, you know, just a, it, it'll happen, but, you know, really kind of taking the time uh, to stretch the imagination is really important. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's take a look here. You can see that um, on, in addition to kind of curving the horizon over here, um, it did a really funky job of distorting the tulips on the ends here. Now, I really like that. I did that intentionally. Let me actually, I'll hide this uh, column so we can get a larger uh, view of the, of the image. Now, my point for this shot was not accidental. Uh, I actually, it was very intentional. As I was walking through, I, I, this was one of the only paths that I remembered that was, you know, that had a nice vanishing point where you see a straight line. So uh, what I did here, and especially because there were two different colors it looked like there were two gangs. That's kind of why I took this shot the way I did. It looks like two rivals kind of heading on uh, on a battlefield. 
And so it's kind of cool because typically flowers uh, have a really nice, positive, warm, kind connotation to them. And here I'm giving them a, a kind of more of a sinister... Um, flower wars. Flower wars. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like angry it's, it's birds. It's a real thing. Yeah, it's angry flowers. So uh, <laughs> we just need a little catapult here. Um, so here's the thing. With this image here, uh, it does a nice job of exposing for the foreground, but we have a, a loss of highlight information. Uh, it's pretty much blown out. So what I did was I used a promote control to get multiple exposures here. And so you can see the promote control got me a nice exposure for the highlights. Um, and so you can see as we go through here, oh, and William's asking if that's a girl. Yeah, it is, I guess. I, I never really even noticed that. There is a girl right over there. Um, I'm going to clone her out <laughs> when we're done. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so here we're kind of going through, going through. And now we're getting shadow detail. So you can see here, um, you can see through uh, under the various uh, stalks of the flowers. So I'm going to take all of these images here, um, and I'm going to send them over to Photomatics. So I'm going to go to File, Plug in Extras, Photomatics. Actually, no. I'm going to ex go to Export and customize it. Uh, I'm going to go to Photomatics Pro. I'm going to set the uh, Pro Photo RGB 16-bit. We'll just do a JPEG, which is fine for now. And then let's hit Export. So it's going to take these images here, and it's going to convert them over to um, a tone mapped image. Oops. There we go. All right. So what basically tone mapping does, for those of you that may not know, is um, it goes across all of the images that we send through pixel by pixel, and it tries to find the best values for each of those pixels. And what the hope is is that you will get um, a nice evenly exposed image like we do here. I'm going to fit this to screen here. You can see, man, oh, man, um, this is as beautiful of a uh, luminance curve as I could have ever asked for. Um, we have nothing bunching up on the right or on the left, which means that we don't have any uh, blown out highlights or any clipped shadows. All of our juicy details are in the mid-tone area, and we still have some good highlight and some good shadow. So this is really, really nice. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, adjusting this a bit. I'm going to drop the uh, uh, luminosity a bit. I'm going to drop the detail contrast a bit. Um, and I'm going to start by, wait a second, am I missing any sliders here? Oh, you know what? They're just kind of, I see. Never mind. I'm not missing any sliders. So um, we have a nice even exposure. You can see here that we have uh, an overall good feel right here uh, in the sky. And uh, we have detail in the shadows here. And it looks uh, relatively realistic. So I'm going to hit Save and Reimport. And so here's our image. So let's take this image and compare it. Uh, this is what I always like to do is compare two images together. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, this is the keyboard. Yeah. Give me one second. I want to get the right uh, images so we can compare here. We have uh, that one and that one. And we'll hit compare. There we go. All right, so you can see overall um, the difference here between the two. Um, so let's go ahead and take this image and bring it over to the suite. So I'm going to go to File, uh, Plugin Extras, Perfect Photo Suite, and I'm going to send it over to Perfect Layers for stylization. Now, one of the things I'm going to try to do is use the Crop Tool here, uh, and I'm going to try to do uh, more of a kind of a panoramic effect. So what this does is it removes some of that foreground information, and it gives it uh, definitely more of an interesting feel. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and take the uh, retouch brush and see what we can do here with kind of getting rid of this woman. I'm not going to concentrate on her too much right now. Um, it didn't do a good job. What I might do if I really want is send it over to uh, Photoshop. Paul asks a great question. He asks, how did I manage to not get a lot of movement with the flowers? Uh, actually, there was no movement whatsoever, Paul, and that's just because we were lucky and uh, it was a pretty windless day. Um, so there was no wind. Uh, and if there was, you would totally see ghosting here. Uh, that's actually a great, great question. That's the only reason why I took these shots here. And as opposed to a single image, um, I was able to bracket because it was rather calm and nothing was moving. So I was very lucky there. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and send this over to Perfect Effects so we can stylize. So one of the things I like to do is um, I like to blend uh, black and white layers with color layers. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take uh, under the effect options here, actually I'm going to hide the effect bar. Uh, Chris, uh, hey Chris, um, is Ron on here too? I didn't check, but uh, Chris is asking if this is Skagit Valley in Washington. This is, uh, I, I don't know if it's where that is. Uh, this is uh, Mount Vernon, a uh, tulip town. Um, but, and I took, it, I took uh, these shots here last year with Jacob. Um, so I'm going to go to the black and white layer here, and I'm going to convert this to black and white. Now what I want to do is I'm going to boost the contrast a bit, and I'm going to start exposing the color filter to expose for... Um, the, towards the greens here, um, and it, what it does, it's it, it's just kind of like the old days of when you would put a filter in front of your lens or color gel uh, with black and white to expose for certain colors. Now I'm not going to keep this black and white. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my blending options here, and I'm going to cycle through the blending modes using live previews. So I'll go probably to uh, multiply. Soft light, hard light. Soft light's definitely the one I want. And you can see what it did, what kind of look it gave it. Um, I'm going to bring the strength to zero, and I'm going to just start bringing it up slowly because I don't necessarily want it at 100%. With that done, I'm going to hit Apply, and then I'm going to hit Add. And what I want to do is I want to boost the, uh, the yellows in the scene. So I'm going to go back to the effect options here, and I'm going to go to the Color Enhancer. And with the color enhancer selected, I can specify a certain color channel. Um, and in this case, I'm going to go to the yellows. And what it does is it will uh, target all the sliders to that channel. So as I increase the saturation, you can see how the yellows throughout the image uh, kind of get a little bit uh, punchier. And then by bringing up the lightness, that's a bit too much. You get a, a nice, really cool look. And again, if it's just too much, use that strength slider. Uh, bring it down to zero, and you can see how the yellows just, it's almost like a, a dimmer switch on the yellows. It's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to bring it up here a little bit. <clears throat> All right, it is the same area. Um, ooh, the Tulip Festival is every April, which is next month. It is next month, right? <laughs> We're still in March, yeah. We're still in March. Okay, good. But uh, um, calling out the road trip a month ahead of time. Oh, why not? Actually, that could be a fun photo walk. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do kind of an on-one Google Plus photo walk there. Um, Candice, I'm using the Promote Control, and I'll give you a link to it at the end of the webinar um, to get my to my brackets. Um, the last thing I might do here is uh, I'm a big fan of this effect. I, I actually use it more than I probably should, but under the Glow category, um, it's the Deep Forest Glow, and it does a wonderful job. Now, don't worry about this here at 100%, but watch. If we bring this down to zero, kind of start bringing it up a bit, you it adds a nice kind of lush richness to the image. So here, if we hit Command P or Control P, Command P on a Mac or Control P on a PC, we get a difference, the before and the after. So what we're getting here is more of a, almost like a Dave Hill kind of a look here, or, or a Dean kind of Bradshaw kind of look, um, which is, is really cool. The last thing I'll do is I'm gonna hit Add, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the Tone Enhancer, and you can see what it did here. Uh, it added by default black levels, which I don't want, so I'm going to bring that to zero. But I'm going to bring the local contrast up. And what that does is it adds some texture to the scene, which is nice. Um, and again, command P, control P, or yeah, command or control P to do that. And so, uh, this is kind of uh, what I would do here. I wouldn't necessarily bring this to focal point because um, I want to have a really, really long depth of field, or deep depth of field, I guess. So I'm going to hit Apply, and I'm going to send that back to Perfect Layers. So now I can hit Save, and then we return back to uh, Lightroom, and then here's our image. So with Lightroom 4, the last thing I'll do here is I'll go to the Develop module. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit. I'm going to wrangle those back in uh, out of the brightest parts of the image. Um, I'm also going to bring up a little bit of uh, contrast, a little bit of clarity throughout the whole image, and I'm going to go straight. Stri uh, I'm going to go straight down to the uh, effect pal, and I'm going to use the post crop vignette a little bit. I'm going to increase the uh, midpoint, 
increase the feather just to darken the edges a bit. I can see that I brought out a few dust spots, so I'm going to go to the spot healing tool, and I'm just going to, about the size of each spot, oops, looks like it selected that area there. Okay. Uh, and, I th and right there, there's a spot right there. Um, the reason why we're starting to see those spots <clears throat> is because um, when you add local clarity, um, that last effect that I applied, uh, that will bring out uh, really the appearance of any uh, dust spots. So um, with that, that's kind of here what I did. Let me just see if there are any quick questions. <clears throat> the command key? <laughs> oh, we have a, an on one celebrity here, uh, Mr. Mr. Cornfed. Um, yeah, no, the command key is a Mac, a Mac only key, Mr. Cornfed. So um, with that, let's go ahead and give Ryan a little bit of time to shine. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to make you presenter, <clears throat> Ryan, and you should be able to show your screen. All right. Okay, perfect. Um, so for a couple of landscape shots that I chose, um, the first one that I'm going to use here is uh, this shot. It was actually out when I went to the Boston area. Um, so it's Brian's old stomping grounds. And this was out on Martha's Vineyard. And so this is uh, just so many cool lighthouses, so much uh, really cool stuff to shoot. Being somebody that's an Oregonian, we don't have really that, um, as much of that seafare culture uh, here in the Portland area as we as you get when you go to the, the whole Boston Martha's Vineyard area. So I actually, there was a couple masts from these ships that were up in there and I went ahead and masked those out just to save those a little time. And what I'll concentrate here on is the stylization of the image. So let's take this from our Lightroom and take it into perfect effects and start uh, really shaping it and molding it. So I'm gonna go through here File, plug in extras, and then we'll go to the perfect photo suite. And again, the perfect effects, what's so fun about it is um, even just sitting here watching Brian do his thing, there's so much that you can do in it. And you're really, I know it sounds cliche, but you're really just limited to your creativity. I mean, you just continue to play and you continue to learn um, and create your own presets from that. And so um, it's just, you know, it's, it's one of the, the first places that I go as soon as I want to start processing my images. So with that, we'll go here into the Perfect Effects module. And traditionally with my landscapes, uh, I keep them more natural looking, but uh, you know, with this one, I wanted to go with more of really a stylized look. And so the first thing that I was going to do, uh, or that I'm going to do here, is take it into uh, Blue Dawn Leonidas. And, um, you'll see here, this is going to start cooling it down, and this is going to really set the tone for what we're doing here. So you can see, I actually like that at full strength. It gives me um, some nice contrast, um, and of course, as I say that, you, I'm going to just bring it back a little bit just to kind of tweak it and play with it. So we'll just drop it just a little bit there. Uh, but again, it starts giving those, those cold tones, and I, I really like what it's doing here with the image. And what I want to do next um, is uh, let's take it in here. And again, you can start playing with these and start um, just kind of going through, checking out what you want. Um, I want to add the Havana. And so what I'll do here is come over to my layers, click Add. And again, you can just keep adding these, keep stacking them one on top of the other. And if you notice real quick, all these uh, thumbs down here update. So it's going to show you what it's going to look like next if you were to add that. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead, click on Havana here. And then what that does is it's going to really kind of give me some a, a little brighter tone here, uh, especially in the foreground here on the grass. But at 100%, um, that's really too much. And that could probably be said with most of, of everything that you're doing in Perfect Effects. Dial it down to zero. And this is something that Brian does quite often in so take it down to zero and then start increasing it from there and see what you're going to get. Because if you look at 100, well, it's, it's kind of a skewed perception because it's coming in, again, just at full strength. So what we'll do is bring it down to zero, like I said, and just start increasing it just a little bit. And I'm going to really take this to about half, maybe just a little bit less. So I'm getting just a little bit of color uh, that's going on here in the grass. And it's bringing back some of those yellows, uh, some of those greens. Um, and so what I'm going to do here too is 
um, just to add another layer and just another, another tone going on here is the Thermopylae. So what I'll do here, again, click on that Thermopylae by adding another layer. And you can see now I'm getting more of those green tones. But again, I'll take it down here to zero, and then I'll just start increasing from there. So now we'll bring that up just about 30%, somewhere around there. And uh, the last one that I'm going to do is just enough darkness. And so what we'll do here is we'll go back into the landscape, and I'll head on back. You know what? I think that's actually in the movie looks. Oh, is it back in the movie looks? I think so. All right. Let's head back there. And you there are correct. So I'll click one more layer here. And with the another thing, I know we're going through these pretty quick because we want to uh, show you as much as we can. But as I sit there and hover, not only do I get a larger preview of what it's going to look like uh, with that specific effect, but it gives you a preview. So if you don't know what some of these are doing other than just looking at them, um, you can get an idea of what it's going to do there with the just enough darkness. And you'll see that as I add it here, it's going to um, just give me uh, drop some of those shadows in just the right places, and that's why it's called Just Enough Darkness. And of course, I'm going to back that off here and just bring that up just a little bit just so I can kind of get some more contrast there by darkening some of those shadows. So, yeah, go ahead. <coughs> is there a question? There are, are a few. The first one is, uh, actually, I can't I remove the question, but the, the question was whether you can increase the size of those preview thumbnails. So would you mind just kind of you can actually just put the um, cursor. You can ho you can definitely hover, mm -hmm. but um, if you put the cursor in between the, the category bar and the image itself, you'll see you see that little dot in the middle there. Mm -hmm. So you can drag that up if you want to to see larger thumbnails. I don't know if many people know that. And then there's a minimum size there. We'll just drag it back down. If I can get a hold of that there. Yeah. Just like that. Just so like yeah, that. you can you can adjust that with the sizes, um, and it is nice when you're, especially if you're somebody that's new to Perfect Effects, make that as large as, as possible so that you can get just a, a feel and an idea of some of the effects that are out there that you can use. So what we'll do here is we'll take this over, click on Apply, and this is going to send me back into Perfect Layers. Um, and now that I've got it here in Perfect Layers, what I want to do is just use a little bit of focal point because I really want to draw the eye in on that lighthouse. Um, and this is a, a good example here of, of leading lines. And um, as soon as that, that uh, progress bar is done going, you'll be able to see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. But uh, the, you know, your eye is, is caught here, and then it hooks around, and it goes straight to the lighthouse, which is there exactly uh, what I want to do. So we'll give it just another second here. Because some of these um, presets um, that are involved, so uh, we take some of these like just enough darkness, they're actually made up of other components itself. So you're getting um, almost multiple presets within some of these single presets that we've created for you. Um, so it, it truly can be a, a one-stop kind of shop if you just want to click on one and, and get a couple of those looks. Or again, save those out as your own presets, streamline some of your workflow that way. So what I'll do here is come on here into Blur, and that's going to open up our focal point. <clears throat> and focal point, I know you, uh, I'm sure a lot of you frequent listeners have, have heard us talk about this again and again, but it is just such an amazing application because um, I shot this with obviously, um, I think what I had on there uh, may have even just been an 18 to 55 uh, lens. Um, and obviously you're not going to get uh, some of the depth of field, of course, with some of the prime lenses that we have here inside of focal point. Uh, and as always, you start off here uh, with your focal bug, you can change the size, the shape, all of that. And what I'm going to do is change actually the shape of the focal bug over to planar. And with planar, what that does is it allows you to work with uh, more of a flat plane. And of course, you can change and tilt that plane. And that's working more how an actual camera lens is, is functioning as well. And so what I want to do is I want to lay that out over the top of my photograph here because I want the top to be here in focus, but the bottom is what we're going to take out of focus. Now, as I come down here, I can choose what lens that I want to use. So again, there's a lot of really fantastic prime lenses, both Canon and Nikon. Let's go with something like the Canon 51.2 at 5.6. 
And then what I can do is I can even adjust it from there. So I can drop that amount even further if I want to. Um, or you know, we can boost highlight blooms uh, by playing with that. All these different things that, that we can adjust. But when I hold down the Option or Alt key and click inside the box, I'm actually able then to tilt and change my plane of focus as well. So you can tilt that and change it to whatever you want. So I'm, now what we're doing is we're starting to mimic more of an actual tilt shift lens. So what I'm going to do is tilt this back just like so. And then I'll take and go back up to my feather and just feather that in just a little bit here just so we're smoothing what's in focus and what's out of focus. I might even just move this down here just a touch. Just like so. And then I might even feather that just a little bit more. And I could even come down here, and if we wanted to, I come down to the vignette area, and we could just add a little vignette here just around the focal bug if we wanted to, just a touch of it. So again, then we come back here, hit apply, it takes us back into perfect layers, and then all we can see the true before and after um, by minimizing and showing some of our layers. So let's turn on the one that we started with down here. And what I like is that it's saving a new layer for each item that it does. So I've got my layer here from Perfect Effects, and then I have it from Focal Point. So that as it's making copies, if you don't like it, just trash it. Go back and do it again. Um, but right here we've got our before, mm. and then we have our after. Awesome. And it's really fun to, to see that before and after because a lot of times you get so into the effect of what you're doing that you forget what the original looked like. And I'd say that's a pretty dramatic difference. But uh, I'll pass it back to Brian here. Um, but uh, uh, again, feel free to ask questions on anything that we're doing um, and, uh, and anything that was going on with the shot at the time as well. Yeah, um, thanks for that, Ryan. Um, there, was a, there were a few questions I'm going to cover also right now that came through while uh, Ryan was working. They're good questions. Uh, the first one I'll do right now, I think, where was it? Was it Gary? No, it was actually Gordon. <coughs> Excuse me. So Gordon was saying that sometimes when he sends his images from Lightroom to the suite and then back, uh, the images look different. And so there's a, a setting here that you'll definitely want to uh, consider. Um, when you're working with an image, so for instance, when I work in Lightroom, uh, I work with their Pro Photo color space. Um, that's the color space that uh, Adobe recommends for Lightroom. It's not required, but uh, you know you can use sRGB or Adobe. RGB, the 98 format. Um, however, let's, I'll show you what I mean here um, with what you'll want to check in Suite. First, let me introduce this image here. Um, this is one of my favorite images to work on, actually, um, because uh, it really it illustrates the power of, of the perfect photo suite, in my opinion. Um, I took this shot a couple weeks ago in Multnomah Falls uh, along the Columbia River Gorge, and uh, this was probably my fourth or fifth time shooting at Multnomah Falls, so uh, it's something that becomes a, a little bit old hat for me, and I'm sure for a lot of Oregonians, um, because it's so it's one of the easy, one of the more accessible falls, and easily one of the most picturesque. So um, uh, a friend of mine was visiting who had never been here uh, to Oregon or to Multnomah Falls, so uh, what I wanted to do was uh, bring her so she could see the place. And so I knew that I've been here. I knew the shots I have already were with, uh, you know, I, I took shots with my fisheye lens, with my 14, uh, with my 17 tilt shift. I, I had plenty of wide shots. So I told myself that I'd force, I'd force uh, different kinds of perspective. And I did that by putting my 70 to 200 lens on, uh, forcing a more of a compressed shot. And <clears throat> so what I did was I kind of went uh, pretty far back uh, on the main landing at uh, Multnomah Falls, and I went in. And how far was I? I was about 130. Excuse me, 130 millimeters uh, zoomed in, and so I was able to create this shot here that um, you couldn't tell this unless you know this boulder, which has fallen down. I don't know how many years ago, um, but it, it was something that wasn't always there. Unless you know this boulder, you'd have no idea that this is Multnomah Falls. In fact. It could, the way that the compression, uh, cr the effect that the compression gave to the shot 
it makes it seem like I'm standing just a few feet behind the boulder on the same ground level, when in actuality, this is way up in the air uh, compared to where I am. So uh, it's just a good example of how lens compression can give you a, a different uh, look and feel. Also, by switching on a lens that you probably wouldn't normally use, like a long telephoto lens, in an area that you've shot many times, you can recycle that scene really, really easily. Um, and it forces you to focus on different things, to look for different things. Now I see I've got, uh, this shot is somewhat riddled with um, dust spots, so I'll take care of that afterwards. Now, you can see that for the most part, the shot is very flat. This is straight out of camera. Um, <clears throat> And so um, the reason why it's flat is because there's all this spray coming off of the water falling down. So the water's falling down, and as it's falling down, it's causing spray. Uh, also, the spray is just misting off of the waterfall. Um, and so you can see how it's just very, very flat. And so what I want to do is I want to use the Perfect Photo Suite to help bring this out and stylize it. So let's go ahead and send this over. Uh, to the perfect photo suite. So in this example, I'm going to cover Gordon's and Gina's questions. I'll send this over. Um, and so here we are in perfect layers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send this to perfect effects right away. So here's perfect effects. We've got the image ready. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the, let's drop down the effect bar so we have more screen real estate. And I'm going to go to the Effects dropdown and go to the Tone Enhancer. So right off the bat, you can see just what an awesome job it did. Um, it, again, the black level is defaulted, so I'm going to bring that down to about 5. Um, but I'm also going to bring the local contrast up a bit. So you can see, let's just turn that effect off and then back on, and how it just cuts through the haze, which is really fantastic. Um, I'm going to hit add here. Now again, remember how I said that how when you apply a local contrast or a tone enhancer, it brings out the appearance of dust spots. So you can see how absolutely dirty my uh, camera sensor is. Um, but that's kind of what happens when you switch your lenses in the middle of the field, I guess. So um, it's nice being a Canon CPS member because you get these cleanings for free. Um, I, I, I definitely recommend it uh, if it's something that you, if you have a lot of investments with Canon. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to change the overall temperature of the image. So I'm going to go to my, uh, excuse me, my uh, effects bar and I'm going to go to uh, the photo filters and I'm going to go to the ADA cooling. So the ADA cooling here right off the bat um, does a nice job of adding this blue, uh, cool blue tone. I'm going to bring the strength of that up just a bit. So it adds even more blue to it. Now, here's the key. Uh, I'm a big proponent of being, uh, what's the word? I guess being methodical with how you apply your effects. So uh, the effect that we just applied goes to the whole image over here, which I don't want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want the blue to apply everywhere except for the boulder. I want the boulder to be uh, my focal point, as it were. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to do a kind of a sloppy, quick and dirty job with um, with this. So I'm okay with getting outside of the border here because I'll show you how, why. I just want to make sure I get to the edge here and then I'm going to switch from the inspector. Um, I'm going to change my painting mode from paint out to paint in and with a smaller brush I'm just going to kind of seal the gap uh, here. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it is nice to kind of have a clean mask. And you can see the mask here. Oops, looks, look at that. I forgot <laughs> some areas over here. So I brought that up by hitting Command or Control M, M for mask. So you can see what it does is it brings up the overlay of the mask. I'm going to hide that, and I'm going to close. Now, <clears throat> just like we did in the previous image, remember, um, oh, look at that. It's, it went messy. Let me fix that right there. There we go. Um, we brought out the, the yellows of the image. Well, in this case here, I want to bring out uh, the greens of the lichen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my effects bar up, and under the same photo filter category, there's an effect called Green Enhancer, which I'm going to select. Oh, I made such a faux pas. I'm going to hit Undo. What I forgot to do was I forgot to hit Add. Without hitting Add, if you click on any other effect, um, it will overwrite the effect. That's kind of a workflow change that we made here. Um, 
So what I'm going to do now is reapply that green enhancer. So there we go. So you can see here, um, if we just turn that on and off, look at how it just pops off the screen over here. It looks really awesome. Now the last thing I'm going to apply um, is, uh, again, I told you I'm kind of a nut for this effect now, under the glow, the deep forest effect. And this is going to give me that ethereal, uh, kind of like a mystical sh look to the scene. Just like Ryan said, some effects are best starting at zero, and then you bring it up slowly. So somewhere around here, it's looking great. With that done, I'm going to hit save. I actually, you know what the last thing I might do is I'm going to hit add. I'm going to add a tone enhancer. Uh, and I'm going to drop the blacks to zero. And I'm going to bring up local contrast because I want more detail in that boulder. Now, I only want it on that boulder over here. So what I can do is I'm going to go to this cooling filter, which has my mask. I'm going to go to the masking menu and copy that mask. Now I can go back to the tone enhancer. And this is going to be, a, I'll go slowly on this. So what I did was I copied the mask from the cooling filter because on this layer over here, the mask removes the blue from this area. In the tone enhancer layer, I want that um, tone enhancer only to apply to that section. So watch, I'm going to go to masking and paste mask. And what it does is it does exactly what I want it. It, it applies it everywhere but the rock. Well, now I can flip that by going to masking and then invert mask, and it essentially undoes it. So now only the rock has that tone enhancer. So I can go ahead here and kind of start at zero and bring it up just a bit. So watch the before and the after. Command or Control P. Look at that. I mean, it's it's pretty mind-boggling, the difference, the before and the after. So I'm going to hit Apply and let <clears throat> Perfect Effect do its thing to the image. Oh, and so the question, uh, the first question, Gordon's question, I'm glad I remember this, um, as far as the preview not looking the same. When you launch Perfect Photo Suite, this is critical. Go to Perfect Photo Suite and then go to Preferences. And then what you'll want to do is um, the Lightroom plugins, you'll want to make sure that your color space matches. So I'm going to make sure it's Pro Photo RGB uh, at 16-bit. And then under, under the general, the same thing. You'll want to make sure that you specify Pro Photo RGB or Adobe RGB or um, uh, what was the other one? sRGB, which is right over here. Um, and actually, you know what? This came up a long, long time ago. Um, and it was one of our webinar goers who's here right now, Candice, my, my friend Candice, who brought that up to my attention. Um, so Candice, good job. You see, I still remember that. Um, but you'll want to make sure that they match up because that will cause a difference in um, appearance. So it's really important to do that. Um, isn't the green too unrealistic? Well, Jerry, I guess the whole shot itself is rather unrealistic in this terms of style, and that's what I like. I'm not going for realism. Uh, I'm not going for like a photojournalistic style. I'm going for uh, peaking the imagination. So yeah. Plus, I'm also green. I'm red green colorblind, so I don't know if this is kind of really too much. I, uh, I'm not even joking. I don't know if this is too. It green. just it may look a little like the nuclear plants just down the block, but it, but you know well, that's okay. Yeah, no, I couldn't. No, even but tell. It, again, it's it's your style and <laughs> and it's yours. Yours to play with. Lime Jello. Yeah, um, you know, it's just kind of, it looks, I slid it until I kind of could tell that it was green because it reminds me of, I can see it looks like Kermit green. <laughs> Is it like Kermit green? It's a, it's a pretty strong green. You could call it a Kermit green. All right. So that's kind of what I'm doing here, though, Jerry, is kind of um, going, I wanted to go for more of a fantastical look, you know, um, with, you see how we softened up the spray. Um and it just kind of looks really cool here. So um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my retouch brush in, in layers, and I'm just going to quickly um, get rid of dust spots. You know, you should never. One thing that I really should try to do as often as possible is I never want to post an image that has dust spots. Um, it's just it, it, because if you have dust spots, you know, this image can be so fun and so provocative, and then you see a dust spot, and what it does, kind of to Jerry's point, is it immediately removes that sense of fantasy. Uh, and it brings it back to, oh, this is just a digital photo. Um, you want to remove any of those obstacles from your image. And so, again, let's, let's just kind of see the before and the after. Now, the next qu uh, question I want to answer was, um, where was it? It was actually a really good question. Uh, bear with me while I find it. It was Gina's question. So Gina asked, 
Uh, is there a way to basically do a save as to rename? So right now, oh, look at that. There's still one more dust spot. There we go. Um, right now, if I hit save, what it'll do is it'll update the PSD file that was created. So Gina wants to know, well, let's say I don't want Untitled 01. I want something else. So what you can do before you head to Lightroom is go to File and then go to, oh, I guess you can't. Um, you can't. If you sent the image to um, Perfect Photo Suite without going through Lightroom, I guess you could. So what you can do normally is you can save as and then change the... You can always export as well. But that would export as a JPEG or a TIFF. Right. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to hit Save. Um, and then the only thing I can do is go back to Lightroom over here, um, go to this image right there, and then go to Photo and then rename the photo. Uh, I think it's a library rename photo. Um, so I apologize, Gina. I thought I had the answer, but I guess I don't. Um, so uh, with that, um, the last thing I'll do here is go to the develop module and I'd use the uh, graduated filter with exposure. I'll bring that down a bit while bringing up the saturation and dropping the temperature. This is a Lightroom 4 feature, uh, the ability to use an adjustment brush with uh, white balance. So I'm gonna drop that and cool it off and bring that down. And so you can see what it does is it kind of uh, adds even more uh, of a saturated color at the top while also drawing your eye closer over here. Um, so that's about it. Uh, I could do more, but I don't want to do it too much. It is a, a dramatic before and after. Oh, well, thank you, Ryan. No, it, it is. I'm going to give you present uh, blah, 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 presenter control. One thing that I, I know uh, Brian said a while back on, on one of his webinars and I think one of the things that I like in watching his photography is um, when you travel to a place, um, you know, go ahead and get that image that you want, the iconic image, um, you know, whether it's of the Taj Mahal or the Grand Canyon or whatever that is, uh, because I think uh, they're fun to have. I, I do the same thing. I, I want to get that, that wall hanger photo. But what I think Brian does a good job of is um, – looking beyond those. And it's really hard to do, especially the more famous the item, the harder it is to do that. So you take something like Multnomah Falls that's been photographed a lot, and even something he's photographed a lot, uh, and then you come up with something like what he had. And, and I I bet you could peruse the, the internet pretty, uh, you know, do some pretty serious Google searches and not find something else that's similar. So uh, that's just another thing that uh, I like to point out with Brian's photography. He does a good job with that. Thank you. So what I'll do here is I want to show you all. I've got a water shot myself here. And we'll take uh, this image. And the, the little story behind this is this is uh, on a stream um, just above a place called Priest Lake up in northern Idaho. And it is an amazing, amazing place. Uh, I've been going there most of my life. And um, this was uh, uh, one of my first attempts at playing with uh, just slowing down water, starting to use some Coke and filters. And, um, so, you know, getting that silky smooth look and I, I had to shimmy across a log, uh, from the, uh, the right bank there all the way to, to get where I was and was dangling my photo equipment and tripod, you know, over this kind of, over this stream vicariously trying to just, um, not drop all my stuff in the water, but I, I got this shot and I was happy with it. And so, um, so let's take it now and let's start improving upon it. And, and that's the thing is once you get a shot that compositionally is good, then it's fun. Take it into perfect effects, take it into focal point, photo frame, whatever it is, and, and you can start playing with it. So let's do just that. Launch it off from Lightroom here and get into, again, our perfect photo suite. So with this shot, what I will do is I'll keep more of a natural look to it. And what we'll really do is just enhance it, um, enhance what, what we're seeing here because this image that I've got um, is pretty much what came out of my camera from the raw image. Um, so I just made a quick JPEG of it and then we'll, we're running here into the effects. So there, there hasn't been really any tweaking at all that's been going on here. So we'll again click on our effects, let that load up. And the first thing that I want to do here um, is I want to use a tone enhancer. So let me scroll on down here. And under my effect options, I'm going to come down, just choose my tone enhancer. And you'll <coughs> notice that, again, that's giving me some, that's uh, increasing the blacks, giving me some local contrast, just gives me some nice pop to start off with. Um, and it's, it's something that I do to a lot of the photos that I'm running through the perfect effects. Now, what I want to do is I, I've got some nice green foliage. And just about any time I've got green foliage, 
I want to run it through the, uh, the green enhancer. So we'll go over to the photo filters and do just that. And what's nice is when you come into these categories, they're in alphabetical order. Um, so you can just um, scroll on over till you get exactly what you want. So I'll add another layer here. Again, just we'll continue to stack these and I'll choose the green enhancer. And when you get it at full strength, it's a little, little strong for my, for my uh, taste here. So what we'll do is we'll back this off, start off at zero, and then we'll just start to build it up. So we'll bring that maybe to about high 20s, low 30s, somewhere right in there. So now we get just some nice pop there um, out of the, that green foliage. And what I'll also do when I'm on this filter category here is I'm going to scroll on back. Again, we'll add another layer here. And I want to choose the cooling filter. So I'll go ahead and I'll add that ADA cooling filter, which would, again, we're just digitally replicating what you would be doing with an actual cooling filter if you were to stick it in front of your camera. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take my brush here and I'll bring up the inspector. In and hand. Yeah. What uh, Sherry was asking, well, do you remember what lens you were using here? Well, the lens I was using here was, it was actually a 12 to 24 that I've got. It's a 12 to 24 Tokina that I, um, is a, I, I really like it. It's a inexpensive, but I think good uh, wide angle lens, uh, especially for one of those third party lenses. So um, the wide angle is something that again is kind of newer with what I've been doing, but I find that uh, now that I've got those wide lenses, that's pretty much all that's been on my camera um, since I bought them. So what I did is I inverted the cooling filter. So we're still on that. And what I want to do is I want to paint that right here into the water. And I'll do just kind of a quick job here. It definitely doesn't need to be perfect. And you'll see why. Um, and a lot of the, the things that you can do in here, um, there's times of when you want to spend a lot of time on your masking and then other times where you just want it to be kind of a quick and dirty thing. So what we'll do here is I'll just kind of go right around, get the general area here. That's some yeah. fine masking. It is. It is. And of course, if you do want to get really precise with things, you've got more time than what we've got here. You can hit that Command M, and you can actually see uh, where you're able to paint and where you're actually getting your coverage. Or Control M for our PC users out there. Exactly. Control Command M. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the inspector here, and I'm going to come back to my cooling filter. And you can see it's, it's too much. It's giving that blue-purple look. So again, I'll bring it down to zero and then we'll just start building it up. And I just want to cool down that water that's in the front here. So I'm only using it at about half. But you can see we've got nice vibrant colors and I like the green and some of the browns that are there in the water in the back and some of the reflection it's picking up. Um, but again, we just cool it down right here in the front. So next what I'm going to do while we're starting to concentrate on this area is again, add another layer here. And I'm going to add the tone enhancer again. So what I'll do is I'll come over here click on Tone Enhancer, and then you can see it's giving me even more pop out of that. However, what I'm going to do with this is bring up my inspector, bring up my brush, and I'm going to invert that. And with that inversion, then I'm just going to paint that right here into the little mini waterfalls that we've got going on here, just where I want some of that detail. So just kind of right there, and you can see even that just gives it that little extra pop if I turn that effect off and then we turn it right back on because that's one of the main areas there of concentration. That's, that's what you spend a lot of time getting is that slow water, that, that silky smooth, cool look to the water. Now what I'll do here is uh, I also want to just warm things up just a little bit with the tone uh, over the entire image. So I'm going to go over to our landscape category. Oh, easy. I know, I know. We're starting to do a little cool, a little warm. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't make the same mistake I did. Oh, I see. Yeah. We've got to add another layer to do that. <laughs> so Brian's looking out for me. Always. Um, and what I actually do uh, most of the time when I'm using this is I'll double click. Um, so if I want to add this golden hour enhancer, instead of doing a single click to it, I'll actually do a double click. So what that does is it adds the effect, and it also adds another empty layer on top. But if you want to go back and edit that golden hour enhancer, that one that you added, you just click on that layer. And I find I then don't end up uh, writing over the, what I've already done with that. So what I'm going to do, just what I've been doing um, all day here is, again, we drop that down to zero. And then we'll just start bringing that up here. And I want to just warm it up just a touch. 
And you'll see we're starting to take pieces of all these and it's really starting to come along. And I might just uh, take a, a page out of Brian's book here <laughs> and uh, use the, uh, the deep forest as well um, just to get just a little touch of that. And uh, we'll go into the glow section because it really is a glow uh, at the nature of what the deep forest effect does. Not only does it help with some of those shadows, some of the contrast, um, really just kind of enriching that, that image, but you're getting a glow um, with it as well. So again, I'll take that down and I'm just gonna apply just a little bit here. Just like I'm right there at 12 and it gives me just enough smoothness uh, to where I really like that. And then I'll finish this off here with doing a nice vignette. So I'll come through here and I'll go to my subtle vignette that's here on the edge. Click on that and then that brings it in nicely and again, since I'm on the advanced tab, I can actually adjust and play with these as necessary. So I can adjust my, my feather, um, I can reduce the feather, I can have more, change the roundness, the midpoint, all those different things about it. But uh, when we've got um, that all set, we have our before, which again, we've got a pretty flat image, and then we have our after. Yeah. So really adding some pop, some snap to that image. And really this is probably more closely related with how my eye actually saw it uh, at the time of shooting. Because again, our eyes see in what is it, 12, uh, 12 stops and your camera can only, you know, what record, three, four? Five, four or five, depending on the camera. Right, right. So, um, so again, that's what I like to do in a lot of my photography here, uh, especially when I'm doing nature. Um, usually is, is keep it more natural, but that's my style. Um, and uh, But then, of course, in the, the previous one, uh, you saw a little bit of a deviation from that, and it's still, you can have a lot of fun with that as well. Um, Nina asked a question uh, that I'd like, if you can really quickly, uh, wanted to know how to, is there a way to see these shortcuts that we keep mentioning? And there actually is. If you go to the Help menu um, and then go to um, the Show, is it Help? Yeah, Show yeah, Keyboard sure. Shortcuts. Mm -hmm. There it is. Um, it brings up a, a nice little pop-up window that shows you um, all these different, all the keyboard shortcuts. So if you scroll down a bit, you can see there's uh, show hide mask, command M. And if you were on a PC, those would be different. It would actually say control M, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's in all of our products, so each product will have a keyboard shortcut pop-up. So it's under the, again, the help menu item. And you're really, uh, just like anything else, when you start using this, uh, these shortcuts, it really helps your workflow, really helps speed things up. Um, and they're pretty intuitive. Uh, Command M for the masking bug, um, to, or to show, excuse me, your, your mask. You can guide the masking bug with an M. Um, so I would uh, encourage you, uh, try to pick up one of these, say a week, as you're using the suite. Um, and by the end of a month or two, you're gonna be a whiz and you're gonna be flying through all those different shortcuts. Yeah. Um, there was a question of whether you can print them, and I don't, I think, well, let me try something here. If you go to help and then perfect effect help, um, which brings you to the website, is there um, under menus, keyboard shortcuts. So you you can, yeah, you can print. Ah, here, this is nice too because it has the Mac and the Windows. Um, so you can print through here, but you can't print through, oops, through the app. Um, so that's kind Unless of Unless you wanted to, if you wanted that look with that, that gray tone, then you could always just screenshot it yep. um, if you wanted to, to really get that. But I would just go to that help menu and print that out, and it'll, it'll be a little bit cleaner for your printer. 